So the big thing about YouTube then is that we need to have videos here. At all points, we always have at the top right corner upload. So we've always got the ability to upload because we're this creator. So wherever you're at, you should see the upload button. Even if you're over, even if you're over at uh, consumer, you can still <coughs> upload. But anyway, you we're at we're at the dashboard. We're in the Creator Studio. At the top right corner, click upload. <coughs> You get a screen here where you've got a few options on the right side. First of all, if you've got Google Photos set up, so that's oftentimes if you've got an Android phone, you've automatically got your photos being saved to Google Photos. What you can do is you can import those photos from that account to make a slideshow. If you want to create a live broadcast, you've got here live streaming. You can make a slideshow, you can go to the video editor. Usually what we'll be doing is uploading a video. Before we do that, notice we've got the video that you're uploading, will it be private, public, or unlisted? Just like I said previously, public means everyone can see it, unlisted means no one can see it unless they have the link, and private is no one can see it. So we'll leave this public, or if you're using my video for testing purposes, maybe we should put it as unlisted. It'll still be public, but no one really can see it. and then you can click the big uh, upload arrow that'll open the upload window and then find your folder with the with the video select it and open it and you'll see that it's uploading and, uh, and mine's done we've got great upload speeds here this video is not extremely large it is 20 megabytes not really that big, it's about a minute and a half. But again, I've created videos of various lengths and sizes and, and all of that, and it often takes a long time. I'm saving a little money at home, so on a good day, I'm getting like two and a half megabits upload speed. That takes a while. So I put, I set it to upload, I go get something to eat, I come back, and then it's almost done. Here, it's done right away and it's also processing it. You might see processing. It's scanning your video, checking if there's any copyrighted music. This video is a duplicate. Okay, since I already uploaded my video, let me do something here. Sorry about that. Let me go back to here. And I'm gonna delete that video, no big deal. So I'm gonna try again. In my case, I, I had already uploaded it. See, it scanned it and it knows. So I'll just try one more time. Let's see, there it goes. Processing. Okay. While well, it's processing, eventually, when it processes it, processes, it'll see your video and it'll suggest a screenshot. You can you can choose a video thumbnail at the bottom here eventually. Uh, under basic info, I've got the spot to add a title. In my case, it already filled in a title because it took the name of the file. The file that I gave you is called Tech Review Tuesday, blah, 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 dot mp4. It's a video. It had a title. YouTube took the title. This title might work just fine. Here's one of the many things we need to think about regarding search engine optimization. How to get people to find our stuff when they search. I'm going to... I'm going to cut and paste this for the moment over to the description just so that I don't lose it. Because what I want to mention here is, okay, well, what if it uploaded it and it gave you a very weird gibberish title? You want to think in terms about here, first of all, this goes all the way back to what kind of video are you creating? Let's say I'm creating recipe videos. Let's say that this is how to bake a pecan pie. That'd be a great name of my video, how to bake a pecan pie. But probably me and 10,000 other people already thought of that name. It, there can be multiple videos with the exact same name, uh, but it'll be harder for you to, find, to be found if someone else has that name and they're more popular. So think in terms here about what, what are people searching for up here. As I said the other day, I searched for how to fix a doorbell. 
So I could do that, or I could write the <coughs> ultimate guide to fixing your doorbell. That would be another way to be found instead of just how to fix a doorbell. I'm doing this sort of fictional series that I do every Tuesday. I'm going to review some sort of technology, my Tech Review Tuesday series. And I was perhaps going to title this Tech Review Tuesday Episode 4, Motorola Moto E. And that title is good because it has the keywords of review and Motorola. It's good. But what's better in my case would be more like Motorola Moto E Review. Tech Tuesday. The difference here is I'm putting the most important words first. I am doing a series of videos, Tech Review Tuesday. Tech Tuesday. But it's more important the actual product because that's what people are searching for. Many people don't know I exist. Many people don't know that Tech Review Tuesday exists. But many people are searching for a review on the Motorola Moto E. So I'm making those keywords first. Because I can write a really long description here. At a certain point, YouTube will tell me that's pretty long. Consider making it short. It'll let me make a huge name, but it'll suggest a short, shorter name. Motorola Moto E Review, Tech Tuesday. Okay, I can think about it like this the best budget phone. 2016 Motorola Moto E. I'm still doing a review and now I'm using these keywords that people are searching for. It's 2016 I want the best phone right now. Well I'm targeting the best budget phone. People are gonna search for that the best budget phone and they're gonna search a year by putting in the year. So what if I write the best budget Android phone Motorola Moto E. I'm not explicitly mentioning my Tech Review Tuesday in the title. That's okay. I'm going to mention it instead in the description. So basically the short answer is think in terms of keywords and what are people searching for. There might already be a kind of video that you're trying to upload. Can you put a new spin on it? One way to help you is up on search here. The best budget phone. YouTube is going to start to give you suggestions about what people are searching for. Look at this. The best cheap phone. That could be a possibility. I could use that keyword in my description here because some people are going to search for budget phone 2016 or maybe cheap phone. The best cheap Android phone. So just by doing searching within YouTube itself, it'll give you suggestions. In the description, I have set it up in the defaults that it will automatically show my website here. Totally optional, but most likely you want to do this. Any link that you add to the description will become an active link. People can click on it and follow the link. In my case, let me fix this, victorstech.com. I'm putting a link, and I'm putting that a direct link to a specific landing page on my site. A landing page is just basically sort of like a hidden page on your website that you guide people to somehow. I'm guiding people from this YouTube video to that hidden page. Only people that have seen this video will know of that link. Or I could take them right to my home page. There's nothing wrong with that either. But I'm putting a link back to my home page. And then I'm putting some description. Tech Review Tuesday Episode 4. And then more text. Victor uh, tells us about the best cheap phone you buy right now. 
fill that in there and you have as much as you want to write here. There's really no limit. The caveat is when you search for um, okay, let me try that again, best cheap film. You're gonna see results. Thumbnail, you're going to see the the description. Look at this one. Top 100 smartphones under $300. So instead of saying cheap, you say that. Some people are searching that way. Marquez Lee is actually a big name in YouTube. He's got 3 million subscribers. So what I would uh, what I would do is get inspiration by other companies. Check what they're doing for you to figure out what you can do. But anyway, description appears right here. And at a certain point, it gets cut off. Um, enough talk about flagships. Let's scrape the bottom of the barrel and see what can be had for those on the tightest of budgets. So they wrote something here that fit within this space here as a description. This person over here was writing a lot more, and it eventually gets cut off. And over here was cut off as well. So for your description, let me go back to my notes here for the title. Title. Put your most important keywords first. Use YouTube search for ideas of titles. Can you write a title that is different from the rest? Description. Again, put the important stuff first. No limit to your description. Add URLs, they become active links. And now those are unlimited. Optional. Add hashtags. And a hashtag is just a keyword with the hash mark and no spaces. This is optional. They will become active links. They will become active search links. So if I put the hashtag, hashtag cheap phone, so no spaces on hashtags, that will become an active link in my description. And when someone clicks that, it will then search YouTube for every video that used that hashtag. That's so why it's optional. It may not be very, very required. Optional. Use chapter markers. Let me show you an, an, an example of that that makes the most sense. What is that? You might have seen it. Um, how to invest for beginners. This is a video that I created. Uh, let's see. There you go. So, top five investing tips for beginners. Um, this is a this is a video that's twenty three minutes long. So far, 517, 507 views, 17 thumbs up. Yes, some people watch it from beginning to end. And there's five tips here. So uh, like a DVD, you have the ability to jump between chapters. What if you constantly want to watch a certain scene on the DVD? You jump to that chapter. You go to the menu, choose that chapter, and go watch it. You can do that on YouTube. In the description, look at this, chapters. Jump over to step two, tip two, which is at 10 minutes 36 seconds. When you click there, it jumps to that point. 
we can do that very easily. We're writing a description and all we have to do here is write a time code. Minutes, seconds. So you need to know where in your video something happens. In this 23 minute long video I went in and I said okay step uh, you know step number five I gotta go back and fix this because I saw that I did that wrong. I switched them. Um, but if you if you want to go to step four Right, right there. I know that it's in 4 minutes 21 seconds. So when we're writing our description, however you want to write this, I can say here chapters, or I can say sections, I call this whatever I want, and then I'm going to put in a time code. In my case, 00, zero minutes colon 10 seconds is whatever. At 00, zero minutes and uh, 50 Two seconds is something else. At one zero one minutes and zero five seconds is something else. And YouTube automatically links it. Nothing else that you need to do, except do it properly. And like I said, I'm as a whoops, I didn't do that one right, so I've got to go back and fix that. But uh, then, when this is published, eventually, don't click done yet. Uh, this will be published, and this will be active links. say optional use chapter markers just add time codes to your description and 99% of the time you're going to be doing minutes and seconds so 0, zero 25 25 seconds or 12 minutes and 7 seconds into your video. Now the catch with your descriptions are whenever anyone watches a video they get only three lines of a description. Everything else that you wrote, your 10 lines are hidden until you click show more. And not everyone is ever going to notice that or want to read more. So that's why I said here, put the most important stuff first. In my case, the third line, it's already cut off, but I'm showing people something else is here. Chapters. So when they click there, they'll see the rest. And then I've got here a special offer with an active link and send us an email and so forth. No one, perhaps a large group of people, are not going to see this. So the most important stuff should be first. Your, your web address, for example. <laughs> then you got a spot for keywords. So how to is my keyword or instructions, comma, um, advice, comma. If I no longer want one, I can just delete it. And these are the keywords people are writing. So what about this? Motorola, Moto E, comma. That's a keyword now. And I can have as many as I want. That helps me get found. 5 to 10 is a good amount. If you're putting a lot, you may um, seem like a spammer because you're just trying to hit everyone with a few uh, properly placed ones. 5 to 10, you can do pretty well. After it processed, eventually it's okay, pick a thumbnail. If I went through the process of verifying my channel, I would have a fourth option that says upload a thumbnail. I would recommend always upload a thumbnail. That requires that you handcraft one. This one kind of did an okay job here. It picked my text here or it picked my picture here, but most of the time it doesn't pick it well because it's going to be randomly from somewhere near the beginning, somewhere near the end of the video, and somewhere in the middle of the video.
On the right side, I can still select public, unlisted, or private. On this screen, we have a few options. If I put it on public, I, I haven't said to publish it yet, so don't worry about that. Uh, but if you if you do public after you publish it, this could then automatically be sent to your Google Plus or your Twitter. So you've built a following of let's say 20 people on Google Plus. This will then also tell them on Google Plus. If you've got a Twitter, you can activate that. It'll have you log in. And then it'll tweet this video to your followers on Twitter. There is a way to also send it to Facebook and such, but you don't do it directly on this screen. You have to do it on the following screen. Google and Facebook are not really big friends at the moment, so there's not an easy way to send it, send it to Facebook here. You used to be able to a few years ago, but now that they're no longer friends, we suffer. So we'll see how to do that a little later. Unlisted, no one can see it unless they have the link. The link is visible right here. And then private, no one can see it, only you, unless you go in here and start to put in email addresses. It's not that straightforward. What we can do, public, private, or unlisted, is also use playlists. For myself, I teach this class and a bunch of other classes. I upload videos for all of these classes. I put those videos into separate playlists so that the people that are interested in a certain topic watch only those videos. I separate videos into playlists. So if I click here, previously I made a Tech Review Tuesday playlist so I can add it there. Or at this point I can create one right now. The best phone reviews. So I've got a playlist where every every uh, month I create a video reviewing a phone, and I put each of the phones into the playlist. I can make the playlist itself public, unlisted, or private. So it sort of defeats the purpose. If you put an unlisted video into a public list, it's not really going to show up because they need the link. If you try to put a private video into a public list, it's not going to show up because the, it's, it's private. But let's say I'm creating a playlist. I add it there. So I'm adding that video to that playlist, and I can add it to more than one. More than one playlist for organization. Let me show you an example over here for this account. This is the BMC Financial News Network. This is giving uh, this is, this is giving uh, Keeps you up to date with stock market trends, news and commentary, etc. 1,600 views so far since January 3rd. Um, this one has um, how many videos? Uh, like one, two, three, four, like 20 videos. Um, but they're organized also into playlists. When you go to someone's channel, you'll see playlists. So videos about ETFs, videos about investing for beginners, videos about 401ks, videos for March. So you can put videos into as many playlists as you want and the point of a playlist is I want to view all of the investing videos so I can play all those videos at once. YouTube will play you the first video, when that one's done it'll play you the next video. We've got some notes here for playlists. Group your videos into topics. People can watch one video and then auto watch the next one. So watch the next video in your series, and the next one, and the next one. YouTube will automatically show the next video in a sequence. Can share all the videos at once with one link. That playlist will have a link, an address. 
and therefore you can share that address on social media or via email or whatever and then give people access to it. We've got, uh, what else on the screen? Okay, so uh, don't publish it yet. We can make these changes whenever we want, but usually I have a plan that I put all my settings properly and then I publish. So don't publish yet if you already did. Um, can you delete it if you already published? Yes. Actually, I noticed that I published it only under somebody else's channel, it looks like. It shouldn't do that. Uh, it's not that you're going to put your video on someone else's directly. It's, however, if you if you watch some video, it will be recommending other videos. So your video may be recommended to other people. If you want to get rid of it, you have to go back to the icon on the top right, Creator Studio, Video Manager on the left. And then you can go back to edit that video. And then click edit on the video. So here we've, we're setting up our basic info. We can go to translations. I wrote this in English. Maybe I also want this to be shown in Spanish or Hebrew, Japanese, etc. I have to provide a Japanese version of it, a Spanish version of it. It doesn't do it for me. And notice at the bottom, get professional translation by a translation. So if you can speak another language and translate your own description to another language, that might be useful. More people can find your video if it's multilingual. So that one's, that one's optional, but could be useful. Advanced settings. Over on the other screen, we had set allow comments until they're approved. So you can change these items here, user rating. So we've seen all of this on the other screen. YouTube license, syndication. Uh, this, one, this one doesn't let me change it, but if I have activated my monetization, I can say only show my videos in monetized platforms, meaning only show videos if I can make money off of them. Because YouTube videos can be shown, for example, on someone else's website, and they can choose to show your video on their website without ads. So if you turn off everywhere, that video will not be shown on their website. Captions we talked about, and here it is here, allow embedding. Do you want your video to be shared by to other people's sites, yes or no? I would recommend yes. Let your video, by all means, try to go viral, try to be found by more people. And so, if you turn that off, you limit some of your audience. As you get subscribers, do you want to let them know there's a new video? Most likely, yes. So we would leave that on. As soon as we could click Publish, they will get a message that says Victor uploaded a new video. Does your video need to be age-restricted? Is, is your video for 18-year-olds you know, and up and such? Um, if you turn that on, a person will have to log in and verify an age to watch your video. I believe the setting is you cannot monetize your age-restricted videos. Yeah, here it is. Your, this removes the ability to monetize your video. We've got category, location, language of the video, 
allow viewers to contribute subtitles, so we've seen all of that. Recording date, so you can put today's date or you can put when was this video recorded. I don't really think there's much of a purpose to this. I don't think it lets, I don't think it helps you regarding when people search. It could, but usually the recording date probably is today when you uploaded it. Show your stats. Here's your video 3D. This one's really fallen by the wayside. No one really cares about this anymore. 3D didn't really take off, it seems, again. But there was a fad a few years ago that you can upload 3D videos. You have to create a special video. So th just simply selecting this doesn't mean your video will become 3D. You have to upload a special video that has been set up in the left and the side-by-side -side type of format. I don't know how to do that. I've never done it, so don't ask me. But no one really cares about that anymore. Is there a paid product endorsement here? In full disclosure, you should say, either in the description or at the very least tell YouTube here and comply with local laws that is did Motorola pay me to do this review should I say that in the video or in the description at the very least I should tell YouTube there's various factors there that come into play regarding fair what's the right term fair uh, what's the term when politicians have to reveal stuff Transparency. There should be transparency here. YouTube thinks so and the law does. So this is different than monetization. If you do a video about a Motorola review and you want to monetize it, that's fine. But if you want to do a video to monetize it and you were paid by Motorola to promote the video, to review it, you should tell YouTube you got, you got some sort of compensation. And compensation could be you got a free phone out of it. Not that they paid you, you got a free item. If you did set up monetization, you will have a fourth tab, which I can't show you, of course, here. But once that's set up, it'll tell you, turn on ads, yes or no. If you say no, you can't earn money off of them. If you say yes, you can earn money. Then it'll say, add an ad before be the, the video, or after the video, or in the middle, or all three. The more ads you put on your video, the more possibility you can earn money off of them. But then the more possibility that they are annoying to people. So those are some various nuances there about the video process. I'll click publish in a moment. Any questions on any of these items? There's one thing there on that screen and another screen, but has it ever been on TV? Yeah, that one is right. It's right here under the license and ownership. No, I'm sorry, under the captions right here. This is a bit complicated. I don't fully understand all the nuances, but most of the time I've been pretty safe with this first one. This is saying. Here's some examples. I created a video for a company, and then I also captioned it. I'm safe to put this. The content, the, the captions of this video have never appeared on a US TV station. Let's say the client cre had a video created as a commercial, and they ran it on NBC. They ran on a real, real TV sh station. So now I have to choose here because that one doesn't work anymore. It did run on U.S. television. This content has only aired on television in the U.S. without captions. That might have been the case. If they ran it as a TV commercial, most commercials don't have captions. That one might work. This content has not aired since 2012. So that means it might have been up on television, but not since... 2012 since since that time and these other ones again I'm not fully versed with all of these usually the first one is the one you want eventually when all this is set up then you want to click publish all my followers would get a notification that there's a new video if I had selected Twitter and Google Plus it would get sent to Google Plus and Twitter as well those followers could then see it that could start helping me build views. Notice from this screen also, here's a link to the video. So if I want to copy and paste this into an email, I could start sending it to people. And notice also, I can uh, share it from here to Facebook. 
it's not on that other screen but from here I can click Facebook it'll open up Facebook for me to share it there or send that off over to Pinterest I need to log into Pinterest yes now you didn't establish your own channel right I mean no this is this whole thing that we've got here is my own channel it is your own channel yeah when we were up at the very top in the very beginning of the day and we selected a channel we we, were at, we have a channel uh, if if you didn't select the right one here that's when I had mentioned to go to the YouTube settings and here we can create a new channel so I can share to all of these networks here I can go to embed the option earlier about allow embedding yes or no means this YouTube gives me the code of this video that I can copy and paste onto my website and then my video will show up on my website here's an example so on this website there's a video how to build an Android app not, not that one where is it at uh, oh here here's a little CSS trick. So on this website there's a blog, there's some text, there's a video embedded in the text. So little text, little explanation, very easy to do, but then watch a video, watch a two-minute video on this, how to make a CSS3 drop shadow that's embedded right into the video. And that is done here. Every video on YouTube by default has an embed. Has has embed here. So let's say how to draw. So every everyone by default. Let me let me pick a good one. How to draw an owl. So I'm going to click on that. Every video has share. To social media, embed on a website, email it to people. That's what mine is saying here. So this code, if I copy and paste my video onto my website, it's on my website. And I often recommend this to people. You've got a website, you're going to create videos, put your videos on YouTube. YouTube has infinite storage, for all intents and purposes, infinite speed, they will host your video and then you can show your video on your website without using up your own resources. As you start to upload videos to your own website, you're going to use up your own space, you're going to slow down your own site, you're going to use up your own bandwidth. If you simply embed your video to your own site like this, YouTube is taking care of all the overhead. So I've uploaded my um, my video. It's up there. Anyone can find it in theory. So if I start to search up on YouTube, the best cheap phone Moto E, my video may or may not show up right away because it's so new. It may be crowded out by the other videos. Uh, actually, there it is right there. Uploaded four minutes ago, no views. It's there among everyone else. This one has got 29,000 views, 387,000 views. 2 million views, and there's mine with zero views. It's there. It's there. People will start to see it. Could start to see it. So we'll shift gears a little bit in our last moments to talk about trying to get some, some views. And actually, this works really well, and it's relatively easy. So any questions before we shift to that? Let me show you an example how to build an Android app. There is a there is a result here. Thirty seven thousand views. That's my company right there. We created a video five minutes long. How to build an Android app. Seven months ago it was uploaded for all intents and purposes, 
it's a success. 37,000 views. It's gotten us 147 subscribers. Seven months ago, that channel, honestly, I believe, had three subscribers. Now it has 147. This channel of ours, we have the address if you want to make a note, youtube.com slash pmdinteractive. You can't get that short name yet, you don't have a hundred followers, but ours is grandfathered in. We created this channel a while ago, and we were able to choose a name early on. Now they've changed the rules, and to my knowledge, you need at least a hundred subscribers before you can change your name. That's a pretty high bar nowadays. But our channel's got the short name, youtube.com slash pmdinteractive. And what we've got here is got our latest videos. You can go look at videos and all the videos are here. There's only eight of them so far. You go to playlists. There's a how-to playlist. You can look at channels, you know, ancillary channels and such. And so if you look at videos, our video from two years ago only has 96 views. This one has 80 views, 104 views, 44 views and then 38,596 views. Yes? Will Google notify you when you're eligible for the short name? Just... I'm not sure. I haven't dealt with a channel very recently where I needed to change its name and I didn't qualify. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what happens yet. I know on Google Plus, when it notifies you, you log into Google Plus and it'll notify you at the top. Claim your custom name. It may do the same thing on YouTube or you may have to check it yourself. How to code a, how to code in HTML5? Only 75 views. How to use Peach Like a Pro? 1,489 views. Android. What do you want to learn next? 172 views three months ago. So this one's been a hit. For our channel, that's been a hit. For other channels, that may be a Tuesday, right? It may be 35, 38,000 views is normal. For other channels, that's amazing. So we've got one of our videos that's done really well, 38,000 views. And the second best one has been 1,500 views. And the techniques that we did to get this are tips to get views. Promote your videos on other networks. So share it to your Twitter, to your Facebook, to your LinkedIn, to your Instagram, whatever other network you have, also share them there if they make sense. If this cooking video, I'm sharing this how to cook pecan pie to my LinkedIn, that might not make too much sense. I don't want to share that there. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't quite fit. But if you have other social networks, Share it there, especially those where you've got more activity. So if you've got a lot of friends and family on Facebook, share it to your Facebook. That could help you get more views. Maybe one of your friends or family on Facebook, they themselves really like that video, and they share it to their Twitter. And on their Twitter, they've got a 1,000 followers. Free advertising. So share your videos to all your networks. We'll do one of this one in a moment. Um, share your video within... YouTube. Let me show you how that one works. This is a bit involved, but it works. I showed you earlier. I uploaded that video, the same video, for another class last month, and I've already got 17 views. Zero followers, 17 views. I'm on my way. Here's how I would say to use that technique. I've just uploaded a phone about a review of the Moto E. I'm going to search any of the keywords related to my video, the best cheap phone, Moto E. And I'm going to piggyback on the popularity of someone else's video. Jim's Review Room uploaded a Motorola review. He's got 29,000 views on his. I'm going to piggyback on that. Any video will work with lots of views. I'm going to go to view that video. I could watch the video to see what it's about, but the idea is most videos will have, by default, the ability to comment. 
if you comment on a popular video, you're going to get eyeballs, you're going to get views. People are being active on another video, piggyback on that popularity by you promoting your own video here. This is a tightrope, however. I'm not going to simply go here and say, watch my video, and put a link to my video. You know, I have to go back to my videos, my creator studio, I have to go back to my video, and then I have to copy my link. I'm not just simply going to any of these popular videos and saying, watch my video. I'm not going to do that. Because Jim's review room gets a notification that says Victor's Tech Reviews commented on your video. And if it's a dumb uh, comment like this, he can delete it. Instead, what I want to do is write something more positive, such as great review. We also think the Moto E is the phone to beat. Here's our take. We're still advertising our own video, but we're doing it in a much more positive and constructive and an on-topic way. I didn't watch the video. I should watch the video, maybe to get a little bit of better insight what actually he said. Right here, I'm faking it. I said, great review. I didn't even watch the review. But I should watch the review to form a more in informed opinion and then write something positive and then give our own ad. That will become an active link. <laughs> so yeah, this has got already 114 comments. It's got thousands of views. Post it. Sure, you can do this if you'd like or not. If this is kind of a scary proposition, yes, you're going to throw yourself out there to people now. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. So this is one technique, like I'm saying here. Promote yourself. Share your video within YouTube. Find a popular video. Find a popular video. And comment on it. Paste your link in. The link to your video. Some people will ignore it, some people will click. Those that are really interested, and especially if you wrote something like, you're totally wrong, here's our take on it. They might be interested enough to click and watch your take on it. Uh, of course, I'm telling you here, don't do false advertising. Don't say, this, is, this review of ours is way better than John's. And obviously mine isn't. So be truthful about what you're doing here, truth in advertising. Be honest about it. Uh, but yes, promote yourself and write it in, in, in ways that will catch attention and entice clicks. Another one of these, share your video within YouTube. Okay, so same as before, find a popular video. I'm just going to shorthand it here. Find a popular video. Comment, more accurately, reply to a comment on it. Paste your link show you what that means. I'm going to go back to all of these results. I'm going to jump over to some other one. I'm going to go to this one, top five smartphones under 500. This one's got two million, two million views. And this one's got 4,000 comments. Okay, so what this one would be is, what this variation is, instead of me simply starting the conversation here, and my comment is going to be pushed out here somewhere because by default top comments will be shown first. My comment will be lost in here somewhere. With 4,000 of them, I might not be found that easily. The way to get around that, which is my second variation here, is Sauron the Dark Lord has posted a comment, and his is one of the top ones. He's got 71 thumbs up. His comment is showing up first. I'm going to click reply to this top comment. And now my comment will be attached near the top because I'm piggybacking on a popular comment on a popular video. It automatically then puts their name in there. I'll explain what that means in a moment. And my comment is going to be closer to the top. 
So again, I'm not simply just going to paste in my address there. I look like a spammer. I'm going to start to have some kind of dialogue back and forth and then segue my link into it. So he said, imagine a power button on the bottom middle. He watched the video and the original presenter of the video, Marquez Brownlee, probably said something about having an awkward power button. It's the position of it, you know. He probably said something, oh, the power button is in the wrong spot. And then right here, Sauron said, well, imagine if it's in the bottom middle. I'm trying to make a joke. So I'm going to say something along those lines. I'm going to say something positive, because positivity breeds positivity. I'm going to stay on topic in the conversation, and then I'm going to add my, my own link. So I'm going to say, Imagine turning on your phone with your mind. We loved the Moto E and wish it had that feature. Video. Little forced right there, but that's the idea. I'm going to reply to a popular comment on a popular video. That'll get my, video, my comment up to the top. And I'm going to be on topic, I'm going to be positive, maybe make a joke. You know, this is much more effort. And then when I click reply, two people will get a notification. The original poster and, in this case, Sauron, the person that wrote this thing. That's why their name is added here. They will get a notification. At the very least, I may get one view out of this because Sauron saw that I posted this my comment is right there. He saw it. Maybe he thought I was funny. Maybe he clicked on my video, and I might get at least one video, one view there. And Sauron might have, oh, never mind. He might have a lot of popularity himself. He might have a thousand subscribers, and that could drive more traffic back to my view, my video. So let's say someone else, Walrus in a Fedora film, said. You may think that he is wasting phones by having all of those, but at least he's telling us about them instead of shooting them and dropping them from skyscrapers like others do. Yeah, one of my big personal pet peeves is there's so many videos on YouTube with people destroying things. Have you heard of the YouTube channel, Does It Blend? Someone takes things and puts it into a blender and checks if it blends. They put in a brand new iPhone, a brand new laptop, a brand new bowling ball. Does it blend? And it's, it's entertaining, but it's like I'm thinking, that's why the terrorists hate us, you know, wasting of money and all of that. But they, those get millions of views. And this guy's got a point here. At least he's showing us something about it instead of just destroying it. That's a $500 phone you put in a blender. <laughs> I've seen kids that do the freeze challenge. They take their phone and put it in a, in a tub of water and freeze it overnight. Now, they are trying to see if it's resilient or not. But if it didn't work, you just broke your $500 phone. So this is a popular comment, evident by the number here. They've been giving it thumbs up. So I could do here, reply. Walrus will get a notification that I'm replying. He may click my link, giving me a, a view. My, my comment here, especially if it's also witty or interesting or funny, thought-provoking, could further get me more views. And I'm piggybacking on his popularity for being up here. Walrus himself has 39 subscribers. That's a, that's a good amount for, for, for most people. So I'm going to say, yes. Uh, it's sickening how people waste money in the pursuit of views. Uh, our in our reviews, no gadgets are ever harmed. Link to my video. This technique does take time and effort and practice. Um, You have to do some searching, find some popular videos, comment or reply. But it does work. I showed you here earlier. If I go back to the Creator Studio, from the video that I uploaded 
um, for the other class, it's gotten some views very recently. A lot of views, when I first posted it and did this for the class, then a few views a few days later as people checked their notifications, and then even recently compared to today. And at the top right, it's telling me I've got a notification. I've got activity. I don't have subscribers yet, but I might be able to do well without subscribers. I have 39,000 views on that other Android video. I have 140 whatever subscribers. And so that's giving me traffic to, to my channel. That's, that's bringing in a little bit of money. I'm, I'm saying that channel is bringing me $10 a month or so out of that video that I made seven months ago. It keeps paying me back. I spent a few hours making it, uploaded it, spent some time promoting it. It had zero views and 12 views for a little while, and then I started to do these techniques, sharing it to our social media, sharing it to other people's videos. It started to build. I'm not even actively promoting that video anymore. I'm not even actively promoting that how to build an Android app video. And by itself, it's bringing in dozens or hundreds of views a week and money. 117 thumbs up, 18 thumbs down. Lots of comments are coming in too. 45 comments. People are usually asking, it doesn't work, can you help me this and that? And this is a double-edged sword because I want to do this, but it's a double-edged sword. I go in and I do answer people's questions here. And it's hard to do tech support for people, but it seems I've been able to answer everyone's uh, questions. And so popularity breeds popularity. 38,000 views seven months later. <laughs> this video is uh, it's five minutes in length. It's not literally that you'll be able to create an Android app in five minutes, technically, kind of. You have to wait for it to download, you have to install the software, you have to plug in your phone, do all this stuff. The video itself is five minutes, and I bet that's why people are giving it a thumbs down. They expect it to make a perfect app in five minutes, but who cares? A hundred, a hundred more people than that <coughs> liked it. And even bad publicity can give you, can can earn you money, because people are coming to complain about your video. They're still watching your video. They may actually, they may actually click on the on the video that, that really matters, the ad that ad that matters to them, and you get money off of that. So YouTube, that's the advanced way to use Google. Anyone can become a creator. We created an account together. You can create as many as you want. You can upload any kinds of videos that you want, any length, basically. The big trick is, of course, what kind of videos will you upload? What techniques are you going to use to get views? The other technique, which I'm not, not going to go into, is promote. If you go through Promote, you pay a few dollars. I haven't done it very recently, but there's a range, $20, $5, $100. You pay some amount, and your video will be shown to more people. That could then pay for itself as you get more views. Whatever investment you made to get more views, then you pay for itself as you get more views. Promoting is often very good in all of these networks, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Promotion is very good because you can target it to the people that are most likely to see the video, to subscribe to you, to hire you, whatever you're trying to do online. So I think those are some good tips there to get views. There's many more that you can look up, of course. Everyone's got an answer. They're all right and they're all wrong. Just try them. These are some that I've used and that have worked for me. So, any questions on today's topics? Okay, so we're going to wrap up the class. Um, remember, this video and my other videos have been put online. If you'd like to view them, request the video via my email. My email is at vcampos at sdccd.edu. It's on the syllabus. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can and send you the, the videos.
next week. Let's see. What we've got next week is set up Google Search Console analytics and an overview of the tools. If you've got a website, I recommend bring your login information so that we can do this step, which is that we will connect the search engine basically directly to your website so that we can track traffic to your website, see the demographics, the most popular pages, all of that important stuff. Because you've built a great website, you're not getting any traffic. Or maybe you're getting traffic, but you don't know who your traffic is. Knowledge is power. Uh, once you know who your traffic is, you can create content, make a better website to attract more traffic. And that's setting up Google Analytics and Google Search Console. We'll do that next week. And the best way to do that is with your login information. Bring that next time and we'll set it up. If you don't have a website or login information, that's fine. Come to the class, follow along, learn this, and then apply it when you can. So that's it for the moment. We'll do it again next week.